Hi guys, I've got a question about a pullback motor and I found in all the bits and pieces I've got I've got a Connex pullback motor so I've just rigged up this little tricycle because I've only got three wheels in the bits and pieces but if I pull it back it's winding up the motor and if I release it the way it goes and it goes forwards much further than the distance I pulled it back. The problem now is trying to actually show how the gears work. Now in a separate video I found a program on the web that I can actually draw the gears and show them but there's a limitation with that method so I'll probably just have to take this apart and point at the bits. Um, if I pull this wheel off take all these other bits off right at least these are coloured so I can talk through the colours the red gear is on the back axle that turns the blue gear, the blue gear turns that green gear and I'm going to call that an idler gear, I don't know what the correct term is but I'm calling it an idler gear and you may notice it's in a slot and depending on which way the gears are turning it either makes contact with the next green gear which is the one that's attached to the coil spring or it moves away from it so it doesn't make contact. If I turn it this way, which is the way we turn the wheels to wind it up, you can see it's making good contact with the green gear. So that way it makes good contact, it pushes itself in. In fact it's the way the blue one is turning that pushes the green one into the big green one and meshes with it. And when it goes the other way you might notice it moves away from the green gear so it's not making contact that's one of the principles now what we can't see without me taking this apart is on the back of the green gear there's a bigger green gear on the same shaft that bigger green gear meshes with a another blue gear that we can't see because it's in the back there that is another idler that slides in and out of mesh when you wind the spring up the other idler gear is popping out of mesh so it's not making contact when you release the wheel so the spring can unwind this green idler pops out so it's not meshing and the one that we can't see in the back there it's a small blue one is pushed into mesh when it's pushed into mesh it's pushed in pushed into mesh with another blue gear that we can't see that is on the same shaft as that blue gear so when the spring is unwinding it's not using the gears on this side it's using the gears on the other side that are a different ratio so for every one revolution of the coil spring or at least the the axle attached to the coil spring by the time it gets down to here the axle the main axle does several turns so that's how you wind it up with maybe half a dozen turns and it unwinds with maybe 20 or 30 turns because the ratio is different for unwinding to winding up now we're just about to go out for a cup of coffee but when I come back I'll take this one apart so we can actually look at those gears but as I say I've also got another video where it's a graphical demonstration an animation of the gears but I'm not happy with it because there's a few shortcomings of the program. We'll take this one apart. So 
is the Connex pullback motor. Before we take it apart, I'll just try and relate the gears to the numbers in the animated video I've done. So we'll call this red one in the middle, which is the one that goes onto the axle, that's zero. And if you watch that other video, it's also number eight. It's at zero and eight. This blue one will be number one. And in the video, it's also number seven. Because I have to show number zero and number one twice in the video. And the way it's numbered, they come out as zero, one, and seven, eight. So zero, one, then the green one would be number two. And you should be able to see it's on a little slot so it can move side to side. So it meshes and unmeshes with that green gear. So zero, one, two, then the green one is number three. And looking through, you can see that number three has also got a bigger gear on the back of it, which is number four from my numbering system. So zero, one, two, three, and four. Three and four are on the same axle. Then what we can't see till we take it apart is there's another blue one in there that meshes to number four. So the next blue one is number five and that's also in a slot so it can move in and out of mesh. And then this blue one has got another gear on the back of it, which we'll call number six. So blue five meshes with blue six and blue six is on the same axle as number one, but it's also number seven. I hope you're following this. And then number seven, this one, meshes with the red one which is number eight. But in my video, it's also one, sorry, zero and one. I think I've probably said that all wrong, but we'll take them apart. So red meshes with blue, blue meshes with green, green meshes with green. And that one is on a slot. Right, is it going to come apart nicely? Yes, okay, so that one just popped out. Well, we can see quite clearly now the slot it was in there and the slot there. So that's the one that allows the green gear to slide around and mesh or unmesh with the big green gear, zero, one, two, three. So it's number two that moves in and out. So we'll take that one out of the way. Take, can we take that one out? Yes, we can. Now on the back of that one, you can see the other gear that I'm on about. And then there, we can see the little blue gear that I was on about that can mesh and unmesh. And that meshes and unmeshes with that gear. Will that lift off? Okay. Right, is this going to come off? Yes. So now we can see the green gear 
that one and that one on the same shaft. In fact, they're a single piece moulding. Looking at this one, it's actually just a little bit more complicated than I thought because even that one's a double gear. So I missed that when I was peering through. So my numbering scheme's one out. There's an extra one in there. So that gear there, the smaller tooth gear there, meshes with meshes with the outer edge of that one. And then that one meshes with the inner one of them. And then that one meshes with here. Now before I put it back together, oh, can I, put, I don't really want to pull that off there. That one will be on the spring and there's a good chance if I pull it off I might pull the spring out with it, which I don't want to do. So we'll leave that there, just so I don't accidentally pull the spring out. Can we peek up inside? You might be able to see there's two pegs go down either side that dig into the spring. And this is some sort of a clutch mechanism here. We're not particularly interested. Oh, I know what that is. That's the bit that grips the connects axle as it goes through. Those two bits sticking out there go into the slot on the connects axle. Right, I'm going to count up those teeth before I put it all back together. Just for the benefit of anybody who hasn't seen a connects axle, this is what we're talking about. It has these slots along the side of it and those would mesh with that yellow plastic bit there. You push it over so the spring allows it to spread out and then it would actually close up again. So that goes back on there. I've just counted, that's 22 teeth on that one. This one I've just counted, 16 teeth on the big side and 10 teeth on the smaller side. I've just counted, this other blue one is also 16 and 10 but they're smaller teeth than that one. Right, that one's got 18 teeth. Right, I've counted that one, that's 22 teeth on the small side and 40 teeth on the large side. So let's try and get these back in order. That one is on the floor. Stay, you going to stay. Right, that blue one goes in that slot. There. Yeah, got it in. Okay. That green one goes in that slot there, so we can move side to side. And the blue one goes down through the middle. There we go. And that goes back on top and holds it all together. Yeah, done. Well, a few screws to go in as well. Well, it was worth taking apart because there's one more gear in there than I thought. What 
I will do, I won't reshoot the video I did with the animation, but I will um, build another gearbox on that site and share the link, because I think the link will actually take you straight to it, ready built. Motor in, or on, so we can wind it up, and then it unwinds. Wind it up, unwinds. One full turn to wind it up, several turns unwinding. One turn up, several unwinding. That's it. Job done. I've just remembered this was all for Jenny Johnson. They asked the question about pullback motors. So there you go. I think out of the three or four videos I've done trying to explain it, that one probably covered it the best. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily, so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.